So we've had really strong corporate profit growth recently. Is that something you expect to continue? So by way of background, I do a lot of historical analysis. Sectors are really my lens, but historic probability analysis is my process. That was a key theme that got us into profits in terms of 2014 to 2016, had a corporate profit recession. And what we saw along with that was defensive rotation. Of If you split the sectors up, you can see more stable oriented sectors like consumer staples, utilities, healthcare, and telecom outperforming those more cyclically oriented or economically sensitive sectors like tech, industrials, energy, and financials. We saw that outperformance, that defensive rotation, into that low of 2016 when we, when we saw Brexit. Now coming out of that, that's been a key theme this year and will be a key theme to watch going into next year. And I think we've seen some pretty good catalysts to give us stronger odds of that profit corporate profit recovery continuing over the next year, one of which is the depreciation we've seen in the dollar. Now the dollar has been a headwind to corporate profits with so many foreign revenues being overseas. Now with the depreciation we've seen has been an extreme amount, only happened five times in history, we see higher odds to corporate profit growth into next year, coupled this time with an acceleration in inflation from a probability perspective. Now also that because of the depreciation in the dollar? Exactly. Now that we haven't seen since 2013. So this will be the first time in quite a while, if this plays out, that we'll see a corporate profit recovery joined with an acceleration in inflation. And what are those two things moving together? What, what does that lead to as far as sectors and performance? Right. So when you think of an odds framework, you think, what does this change the odds in history of? And usually those inflections are significant, what we can expect is an incremental increase in probabilities of higher rates into 2018 as we exit this year. And what that means is a little bit misconstrued when you talk to clients. People think higher rates, that means get defensive, not pro-cyclical or economically sensitive. And actually what you see in history is that economically sensitive sectors really do tend to outperform. And that's because more often than not, higher rates is a reflection of growth, not a deterrent to it. Now that's not all examples in history, but again, more often than not. And what sectors are those that will benefit from this environment? So if you look even over just the last two years, and we've talked about this in the QSU over the last couple quarters, the two sectors that have the best risk rewards are financials and technology. Again, two very pro-cyclical sectors, but interestingly enough, have been negatively correlated year to date. I think there's a lot of investors out there that think, A, higher interest rates are negative for growth, like technology, uh, and B, growth can't outperform with something value-oriented like financials. And again, even if you narrow your time frame to the last two years, and much less to the last 60 years, you see that technology and financials both have higher odds of outperforming in that scenario. And everybody's talking about tax reform right now. If we get a tax reform that we're looking at now, what Ben, what sectors will benefit? Interesting. So what we've seen is five cases in history where taxes have changed, whether it be up or down. Not a lot of instances, right? But you can still study it to sort of gauge some historic evidence. And one of the things that you see that's very clear and that really hasn't been discounted year to date is the benefit to small caps relative to sort of larger cap stocks. We've seen them sort of struggle and let's call it sort of uh, uh, flat year to date on that basis. But we could expect, at least from using history as a guide, that if tax reform goes through, A, that will be pro-cyclical, again, an orientation towards those economically sensitive sectors, that's no surprise, but potentially a three to 400 basis point tailwind for going down the spec cap spectrum. Okay, and when you talk about pro-cyclical, what sectors are you talking about? So we're talking about anything that's not defensive. So the defensive sectors are consumer staples, utilities, healthcare to a lesser extent, and telecom, right? Because you go out, even during times of economic stress, you buy your toothpaste, you turn on the lights, you go to the doctor, you pay your cable bill. Anything on the other side of the ledger is economically sensitive, where you vary your exposure or your consumption patterns when economics are a problem. And so that is energy, industrials, materials on that global cyclical spectrum, technology, financials, and consumer discretionary. And I'm actually gonna include REITs in there because historically it's actually been more economically sensitive than sort of recession-proof or defensive. 
as you look at all of these different factors over the next year, tax reform, raising rates, inflation, what is the, the key factor that will most affect stock performance over the next year? The key theme is the corporate profit recovery. And to the extent that we just came out of a corporate profit recession, we actually very well may be, may be in the early stages of a recovery.